So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I hope everyone's doing great today. I'm Payal Upase from the Professional Beauty India team, and we bring to you yet another Makeup Week 2020 virtually from your screen, where all experts decode makeup for everyone. So for today's session, we have the amazingly talented uh, CEO of Face Palette Pro Makeup Academy, Lakshmi Menon. Lakshmi Menon was the first Indian makeup artist to be nominated to the 265-year-old human-based Royal Society of Arts. Lakshmi Menon is also the second Indian from beauty services industry to speak at the British Parliament after Shehnaz Hussain. Today, Lakshmi will be giving us all a demo on a multi-chromatic eye makeup look. So how are you feeling today, Lakshmi? I'm feeling very excited, Payal. Thank you very much for that warm welcome. And thanks to team Professional Beauty India for giving me this opportunity to do this class today. Uh, so you're all ready with your tools and your makeup? Yes, absolutely. It's a bit, uh, you know, limited uh, because of uh, the containment zones and everything. But uh, I've got the set uh, ready and um, yeah, I'm ready to answer any of the questions that anybody may have. Yeah. All right. So uh, the audience can ask us questions in the comment section, which I will then uh, voice out to you and then we can answer as in it up here all right perfect. so ready to go perfect yes absolutely absolutely i'm super excited as well <laughs> all right let's start then Okay, so hi everyone. Very good afternoon to each and every one of you. Thank you very, very much to entire Professional Beauty India team. Uh, Kanishka, Payal here, everyone who has contacted me to do the session for all of you. Uh, just to give you a brief, uh, as Payal said, she's been warm uh, enough to give a very warm uh, brief about me. I run Face Palette Internationally Certified Makeup Artistry Training Academy, which is based in Kerala in Kochi. And uh, I primarily teach teach uh, a lot of makeup artists, right, from pe people who are freshers to people who have been in the industry for a while, like 30, 35 years. So um, I believe uh, in, uh, in, you know, in the fact that makeup artistry has a science behind it, it has theory behind it. And I believe in teaching uh, right from scratch so that every makeup artist knows uh, the science and theory behind makeup artistry and develop uh, from the uh, basics onwards. So um, I understand, uh, you know, in India, makeup has evolved quite a bit. And today I thought, why not I bring about something a bit different and something very interesting in front of all of you. Uh, and I love teaching artists, you know, that's just primarily what I do. Uh, so I thought I'll teach you how to to do multi-chromatic eye makeup routine, an entire routine. Now, uh, as I understand, a lot of people, uh, you know, when I train, I do sessions everywhere. Uh, people find it difficult to ask questions, uh, what they might think and what not. Uh, you know, I just want to put it forth and uh, just tell you that don't be apprehensive. You can ask me any question that you like. I'm primarily a trainer. I teach. I work with students. So if you have any questions at all, please do not have any kind of hesitation or any kind of apprehension to give, uh, you know, to pass your questions or doubts. And I will answer it in the best possible way uh, I can. And I also believe this, uh, you know, when you step into the field of makeup artistry, this is kind of like a journey, you know, you learn along the way, you, uh, you are always in this journey whereby you just evolve and you get better and better at it. And the journey just doesn't stop, you know. So um, if you have any questions, please do not feel anything. I am also learning, I will learn forever. So um, yeah, I just wanted to put it out there. Yeah. So, um, you know, um, you know, as Indian makeup artists, we all know that Indian brides and Indian culture as such is very colorful and multi-chrome mainly means a lot of colors, right? So a um, couple of years back, let's say around three years back, uh, a lot of indie brands around the world, they started bringing multi-chromatic pigments. Now, multi-chrome actually means, um, you know, you have multiple colors in a single uh, eyeshadow or a pigment form. And uh, sometimes there will be two color shifts, sometimes there'll be three color shifts, and sometimes there are four color shifts. And they are absolutely gorgeous and absolutely beautiful. And we know as Indian makeup artists, we love to work with colors, right? Our uh, culture is colorful, our bridal wear is colorful, it's all flamboyance, and it's amazing. I love colors as well. As artists, we appreciate colors, and that's what artists are known for, right? Now, multi-chrome is all about colors. And uh, three years back, there were some indie brands, especially in the US and the UK, they actually brought um, a couple of multi-chromatic pigments. 
And I started uh, bringing that to India as well. And I've been working with that. Now, in fact, in India, you have a couple of brands. It's just getting new to the market still. Um, it's not widely known as well, but there are a few indie brands uh, and small time brands that have brought uh, multichromatic pigments uh, to India. And I think it's important for artists to evolve and understand what is happening in the industry. These products are available and you can, uh, you should know how to work with it as well. And because you get all these colorful brides with amazing lehengas and amazing jewelry and why not, right? So, um, as you may already know, you know, uh, uh, this is all, you know, the COVID situation here. So I don't have a model here to demo it for you, but I'll be doing makeup on myself. And I hope that is all right, right? I'm going to do a makeup on myself, but I'll be giving you lots of tips and tricks. And I hope that you can write it down. Uh, so, uh, and if you have any questions, please do feel free to ask me, yeah? So um, firstly, as always, you need to sanitize your hands, clean hands, very important. Uh, when you work on a client, ensure you clean your hands first. Don't just sanitize, you need to wash your hand first, okay? Apply, wear your mask, wear your face shield and uh, wash your hand with a nice antibacterial hand wash. And then you need to sanitize because if your hands are dirty, just sanitize or wouldn't suffice. You need to actually clean your hands, all right? So my hands are clean before I just came here, I cleaned my hands and I'm just applying a bit of sanitizer and I'm just going to sanitize my hand, all right? Because we don't want bacteria anywhere <laughs> on our makeup nor our hands, yeah? So um, after cleaning and sanitizing your hands, uh, we have to prep our skin. And prepping skin is very, very important before makeup because uh, it, uh, prepping your skin is, uh, you know, really, really matters. Uh, you know, it really matters when it comes to make your makeup lasting longer. It also shows how you, the finish uh, is, is, you know, like when somebody sees your makeup in daylight and in real life, it should look very nice and glowy and it should look very nice. I, I'm not talking about looking like a Bulb. I'm talking about looking like skin like finish, which is what is the actual meaning of high definition makeup, you know, like your skin should look very, very nice. But we also know, as a matter of fact, we don't get clients with good skin. I have very acne prone skin. I have combination skin and I have acne prone skin. And this is a dilemma a lot of makeup artists face when you work in the field, you get people with different kind of skin, different chemistry, different allergy situations. We have different, different issues when it comes to clients. But the problem, what I've seen with a lot of makeup artists is you learn from one to 10 and you apply one to 10 on every single client. That's not how it works. You have to study your client's skin first and what will work for that particular client. What will work for their skin? What will work for their face? Just, and I, I, let, let me give you an example. Like you learn contouring. It doesn't mean that you have to apply contouring every single time on every single client. Study the feature, facial features, study the skin um, uh, you know, texture, uh, study skin as such and uh, skin type as such, and then work accordingly, right? Now, to give you a brief, my skin is combination skin. Uh, it tends to get very oily during summertime, and it's quite some, you know, I live in Kerala. It's very hot and humid, and uh, my skin gets really oily. I have a lot of pores. I have a bit of texture on my skin. I have a little bit of pigmentation, which is on the, uh, you know, I have like like a bit of five o'clock shadow here. Not much, a little bit, but I have, I'm very acne prone. I get a lot of acne and goes into scars. So, um, what I am going to do is prep my skin according to that. Now my skin is clean. Uh, the best way to clean your skin is use a face wash. Just use a normal face wash that is not too drying on your face, preferably sulfate-free face wash so that it just doesn't strip your skin and make your skin uh, dehydrated and dry. So just clean with a good face wash. If you do not have a face wash, you can very well use a wipe, but Try and use wipes which are alcohol free, uh, fragrance free, and they are biodegradable. I don't like wipes because most of them are not biodegradable. But if you want to use wipe as an artist, because we have locations and shoots and everything like that, uh, you can use wipes uh, depending on the circumstance. But if you are using, try and ensure you use a biodegradable wipe. Yeah. All right. Now, once your skin is clean, then you have to tone your skin, right? Now, what does toning do? Toning basically puts moisture back into your skin. It hydrates your skin and brings uh, moisture back into your skin because we know uh, one of the primary functions of skin is to store water. And if you don't uh, give uh, moisture back into your skin, your skin will be dehydrated. So you need to give moisture back into skin. And for that, toning is the best way. You can use any kind of hydrating toners. Personally, I love uh, using 
Kanauj steamed distilled rose water. Uh, this is from Kanauj. Uh, this is from Kanauj roses because they had the best quality roses here in uh, India. So uh, the one I use is from um, Shesha Beauty, and this is the pure rose water. But it should be steam distilled. Don't use. You know, there are a lot of rose waters available in the market which purely contain fragrance of roses and no properties and minerals of roses. So you can get something which is steam distilled, yeah? So just take a spray bottle, don't use a cotton pad, just take a spray bottle and just close your eyes and just spray on the client as well. Now, when it comes to client and when you work as a makeup artist, uh, when you use rose water, ensure that your client is not allergic to roses uh, and also any kind of flowers. There are a lot of um, artists who are, you know, a lot of uh, clients are allergic to flowers as well. So you can use any kind of hydrating toner, but provided uh, rose, rose is very nice, invigorating. <laughs> rose, the smell is very nice, but uh, you should ensure that none of the client has allergic skin, allergy to roses, yeah? Close your eyes and just spray the bot, uh, spray the toner. Right? And just let it sit. Just let it uh, absorb into your skin, you know? Just give it time, just two minutes. It just absorbs into your skin. Um, also, um, you know, I think you, if you can try and tone everybody's skin, uh, don't skip that step because it really makes a difference when it comes to the entire finish and outcome of how your makeup looks. Um, another thing is a lot of artists I've seen, they use cotton pads to use toners. The problem with cotton pads is that it by itself um, absorbs a lot of um, inner product. So you kind of waste a lot of product. So I think it's always better if you can get a spray bottle, uh, you use that. That's the most ideal way. And um, we'll just let it absorb into the skin. So if you have any questions in between, you can very well ask me and I'll be happy to answer them for you, right? And uh, as such, um, I've worn lenses today. I've worn green lenses because today I'm going to do a green toned multi-chrome. So um, I thought, why not I wear green lenses? Um, so um, yeah, <laughs> we're going to do a heavy eye makeup routine today, right? Uh, so and Lakshmi, I uh, the one question that we have for you is what tips mm -hmm. would you give uh, for a makeup artist to achieve a flawless base? Makeup artist who would give? Sorry, I didn't hear the whole thing. Uh, so what tips would you give a makeup artist to achieve mm -hmm. a flawless base on their client? See, one thing, the key to achieving a flawless base is to, firstly, understand and study the client's skin. What texture do your client's skin have? Like, do they have acne scars? Do they have uh, any kind of, um, you know, dryness in their skin, dry patches in their skin? So you have to study your client's skin first. It's not always that, you know, your clients have flawless skin without any kind of marks, pigmentation, any kind of textural issues you would have. And another thing is when you come on camera, we have ring lights and soft lights and box, you know, box lights in front of you. And there's a blurring effect. But understand when you go in daylight, it's not very forgiving. <laughs> so you will see all these things out. So try and study your client's skin out and try and, uh, you know, work with makeup. You know, I know most of you have a lot of ring lights and stuff, but try and work in daylight where you get natural daylight, um, you know, and apply your base. So that's one of the key things you can um, keep in mind. Second thing is preparation. Prepping your skin is very, very important because that provides moisture and that provides uh, nourishment to your skin. Now, let's let's take for us uh, take an example. For example, um, let's say you're dry or you're. Th Let's say you're hungry and thirsty, right? You're hungry and thirsty. And uh, imagine that you have you see a plate full of, full of food and water right in front of you and you're starving, you're hungry. And automatically, you will just, you know, as a reflex action, you will automatically take that food and water and you'll eat it, right? You're hungry, you're craving for food and you're, you're thirsty. This is the same thing what happens to skin as well. If you cleanse it and if you do not prep it really well, where you don't provide it with water and you do not provide it with nourishment, that is your moisturizer, it will automatically absorb stuff from the foundation that you apply. It may look nice initially, but what happens is eventually, like after a couple of hours, you will see that your foundation will look patchy. It can look dry and um, it kind of, uh, you know, it kind of cracks from places where you have all these dryness and flakiness. So it's always important that you prep your skin really well on the client and then proceed into your makeup. Now, when it comes to makeup or applying your base as well, do not paint your face. Like I've seen a number of artists just camouflaging and putting an entire paint-like thing on the face. 
That's not how it works. You need to layer it slowly. Study skin tones, study undertones. It's very important you study undertones. Do not just whiten the skin and just brighten the skin and uh, make you look completely uh, as if you're not the same ethnicity at all. So I believe uh, makeup artistry is all about embracing skin tones and working uh, with the natural beauty of your client. And we appreciate each and every client for who they are and what they are. So um, I think uh, one of the critical, uh, you know, most important part as a makeup artist is to study uh, undertones. You have to understand because in Indian skin is very tricky when it comes to undertones. So it's very important you study undertones and work according to undertones as well. Another very important uh, thing that you have to understand when it comes to working uh, in a country like India, where it's kind of tropical weather, is you have to see whether the makeup that you do stands in heat. That's also very important uh, to have that kind of flawless look. So uh, these are points that you have to keep in mind. Study your client's skin, prep your skin, uh, client's skin very well. Ensure that your client's undertone matches uh, when you apply the base. Do not apply full coverage just because you like applying full coverage and the client might not need full coverage uh, foundation. So you have to study whether that, do my client need full coverage? Medium coverage might suffice. So you, that's how you achieve a flawless base. And um, also ensure you keep in mind the circumstance and the surroundings of where your client might be uh, visiting or the bridal uh, event is going to be or the reception is going to be. So e these things matter as well because foundations uh, eventually sometimes oxidize. So these things has to matter as well. So, um, you know, it's uh, I always advise artists uh, to, uh, you know, do a trial if possible, uh, do a trial on a, a bride because uh, unlike any shoot or a fashion show that we do, uh, the, well, you know the, the, the you know the makeup need, need not last the entire day. Uh, bridal work may have to last the entire day. So especially for South Indian brides, I think you know we do sometimes uh, makeup at early morning at five o'clock and four o'clock, and the bride might remove at ten or eleven o'clock at night. So it has to last the entire day. So it's always important as an artist we do a trial for the base. Uh, you know, that will really help you to be confident uh, with uh, the work that you do on uh, the D-Day. Yeah. <laughs> I hope that answered. <laughs> yeah, that was great. Oh, we can start with the demo now. Right. Okay. So I'm, uh, my tone has absorbed uh, completely into the skin. As you can see, there are no droplets on my face. It's completely absorbed. And I'm going to take a moisturizer. And very important, you have to moisturize skin irrespective of uh, your client's skin type. Now I'm going to take Simple's Light Moisturizer. It's a very good moisturizer that you get in India and it's made in UK. It's very affordable. You can get it anywhere. It's a very lightweight moisturizer. And this is perfect if you are going to prep skin for oily skin, combination skin, and even for normal skin. And uh, even uh, you can prep, uh, use this moisturizer for humid weather. Like if you are in South India or in humid temperatures, you can very well use this moisturizer, right? Now, if you have a, a client who has dry skin, try and use uh, Emberly's cream. Emberly's does a very good moisturizer that is perfect for people who have very uh, a lot of dry patches and dry skin. Yeah? And I'm going to take a little bit of moisturizer and just dab it all over my face and just going to gently push it in. And let's see, uh, we generally get dryness around the nose area. I get red there and also around the mouth area. So I'm just going to gently massage it in. Uh, you don't do like that. You don't massage like this, you know, use your palms and moisture. You don't do that. Just use your fingertips and just dab and push it into your skin. And that's the most important thing, you know, even for your clients, just push it into their skin. Just dab. Dabbing motion is the most important, right? Just dab, just dab. And take a little bit more and put it on the neck as well. Neck is very important. Many artists uh, fail to uh, moisturize the neck area. We kind of um, uh, fail to do that, but it's important that you uh, moisturize the neck area as well. All right. Okay, just dab, just dab. That will do the job. Your skin as such is a very intelligent organ. It will absorb everything. <laughs> It'll bring it in, all right? Many artists kind of fail to uh, realize that skin is an organ and it is a very, very intelligent organ. We kind of give preference to every other organ in our body, heart and lungs and kidney and whatnot, but uh, we kind of fail to realize that skin is an organ we see every single day uh, in the mirror, but it's a very intelligent organ. So um, it has uh, its own functionalities and properties. So we have to consider that. <laughs> 
most uh, of the artists uh, you know you, you you need skin like a doe <laughs> like an otter don't do that just dab that's that's all that is required right okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, prep the lips as well because by the time the makeup routine is over we need to uh, have good lips like supple lips so we don't want any kind of dry patches so i'm going to use uh, a lip balm any kind of lip balm will do this is from dr popo um any kind of lip balm will do all right so just going to prep my lips as well this is kind of like a tinted uh, lip balm so um, it's really, really nice um, and it absorbs into the lips really, really well. So by the time our routine is over, the lip routine starts, it, it just absorbs into the lips. Yeah. So um, and again, next step is eye serum. You need to prep under your eyes, client's eyes. It's the most thinnest uh, skin area and it uh, doesn't have any kind of sebaceous glands. So it tends to be very... Um, it, you get fine lines there first, you know, you get textural issues, you get dryness there. So you need to always prep under your eyes. The one that I'm going to use um, is from Revolution. It's this caffeine serum. You can use any kind of eye serum uh, you have from Ordinary, the eye serum, which is fantastic. You can use the Revolution eye serum as well. It's really nice to deep off under your eyes. And I'm just going to take it in the uh, ring finger and just slowly dab under my eyes, you know. So that by the time uh, I have reached the concealer stage, it doesn't crease and it doesn't, uh, you know, give me any textural issues. Right. So I just use my ring finger because, uh, you know, this finger doesn't have a lot of pressure. So we don't want to apply too much pressure under your eyes. So we have just gently dabbed. A lot of people apply um, eye cream, eye serums on the eyelid. Don't do that. Your eyeshadows will crease eventually, right? So uh, I hope uh, you understood how to prep the skin uh, for your client. Now, um, I'm going to show you some multi-chrome pigments uh, that you can purchase. Uh, the one that I have, this is from a brand called JD Glow. JD Glow is a US-based indie brand, which is a small time brands are called indie brands. They are perfect when it comes to eyeshadow pigments and all that kind of stuff. So if you're looking for uh, importing any kind of uh, good eyeshadow pigments. JD Glow is amazing. I've used uh, a couple of them for years. You know, they've I've kept repurchasing from them and it's amazing. They kind of uh, uh, started off with the multi-chrome, uh, you know, the hype <laughs> and it's amazing. So uh, the one that I'm going to use, this is um, a multi-chrome color. Um, it shifts from light to light. I don't know whether you, because I have a ring light here, I don't know whether you can pick it up, but this kind of goes from purple uh, it goes to green. So in different lighting, it goes from different, different, different colors. So it looks green because there's a light here in front, but when it goes to sunlight, I don't know whether you can see there's a nice purple tone there. So when you apply this pigment, it go, when you shift your face from to and fro, your, your eyes will uh, show a different kind of colors. You know, the saris where you get the duochromatic routines and stuff. So that's the same thing. Um, that's an eyeshadow form. That's called multi-chromes, right? Now this is a pressed uh, multi-chrome. This is a pressed one. You also get pigments um, in bottles, you know, if you want, you can use that. There are different kinds of multi-chromes you can get in the market. Some brands do two or three uh, multi-chromes. Some of them do 10 and 15 colors. So it just depends. So this is another one which looks pink, but in other uh, lighting, it shows green, uh, you know, green and bronze. So it's a very, very pretty um, multi-chrome. Another one. So I wouldn't be using all the multi-chromes, but I'll be showing you a couple of multi-chromes that's, uh, you know, in my kit at the moment. I have a few more, which is at the Academy, but I have only a few uh, right here with me. So this is another multi-chrome. As you can see, this is kind of like a pinky tone, which goes, shifts into like a uh, khaki green color. So it's, and it has a little bit of purple as well. Again, uh, you know, a very pretty multi-chrome. They have different, different tones. They have blues and golds and bronzes. So you can use and pick up whatever you like. Now in India, there's a brand called Euro Girl. They have actually brought pigments uh, from um, multi-chromatic pigments. So if you um, want to purchase, you can very well try and purchase from Euro Girl. It's not very expensive. I think it's like thousand bucks or something. So it's available in India. 
All right. And as uh, many of you artists may know, there is a brand called Natasha Denona, which is a very popular uh, brand. And they have brought multi-chrome uh, liquid eyeshadows as well very recently. And, uh, uh, you know, that's very pretty as well. So it's a little more on the expensive side because Natasha Denona is a high-end uh, brand. She's a very famous makeup artist based in the U.S. And she has brought uh, liquid eyeshadows, which have multi-chrome shifts. So um, as artists, you can work and we can um, develop and evolve from what you know, you know, you can try using different products. Why not? Yeah. So anyways, I'm going to start with my eye makeup. And uh, because the eye makeup is going to be a little heavy and thick, I'm going to start with my eye makeup because we don't, there will be fallout and multi-chromes generally have fallout. So we want to take it off, right? So I'm going to start with my eye makeup first. And uh, when you want uh, eye makeup to last longer, you need to apply an eyelid primer. Nevertheless, you need to apply an eyelid primer. I see a lot of makeup artists apply concealers. You can apply a concealer, but that is when you want your makeup to last for an hour. Uh, not the entire day, it will crease. Your eyeshadows will feather, it will crease. Understand as a matter of fact, concealer, the purpose of a concealer is just to neutralize the tone and to camouflage. Yeah, it has moisture capability. So it has a lot of moisture and emollients in it. And if you apply it on the eyelid, uh, your natural eyelid has oils and the provided the moisture and the oils from your eyelid, the eyeshadow will crease eventually, right? So you need something that can block the oil from seeping through. So the uh, a primer would do the uh, job for you. Concealer wouldn't. Uh, if you are looking for a very simple routine where you just need to go out in an hour and come back or a very simple um, shoot or something, that would be fine. But for bridal work, you can't uh, use a concealer, yeah? Right, even if you set with a powder, that would not do. Your eyeshadow will again crease. <laughs> I hope that helped, yeah? Now, uh, the primer and the base that I'm going to use is from a brand called P. Louise. And uh, this is slightly light color. You can use any kind of color because shadows are going to come on top. This is from P. Louise. The number is num uh, the shade number is number two. It's a bit light for me, but that would do because I'm going to really uh, put some transition colors and all that. Uh, if you're looking for a nice um, base, you have Urban Decay, which does a very good primer portion. Uh, you also have MAC Paint Pots. And if you see MAC, paint pots they have uh paint pots that can really neutralize the tones on your eyelid at the same time block oil from coming through so the mac paint pots are really really good they have painterly which is amazing for indian skin tone they also have soft ochre which is also very very nice for indian skin tone right Anyways, uh, I do not have a lot of pigments, um, like a lot of uh, pigmented eyelids, but I'm just going to use the Peel Away's base just to apply it and neutralize this entire tone and block oils because I get a lot of, uh, I have a lot of, uh, you know, oily lids. So I'm going to take a bit of Peel Away's base on the back of my uh, hand. If you're a makeup artist, uh, try and use a steel palette. Um, you know, do not use the back of your hand, try and use a steel palette. Uh, sanitize your palettes uh, and use your palettes and your spatula. Right now, I'm going to take a flat brush and just going to place this over my eyelid. As I said, the tone is slightly light for me, but I do not mind it. So I'm just neutralizing the tone over my eyelid. So this is slightly light for me, but that is fine because I'm going to apply um, transitional shades and multi-chrome on top. So this is going to be fine. But use a primer. I've seen auntie number of artists use concealers. Don't do that, right? So I'm just going to apply this base. And when you have a tacky base like this, you don't have to apply a powder. You don't need it. If you're a beginner at eyeshadow, I think you can set with the powder. But if you are quite good at blending and your blending skill is quite good, you don't need to set it with the powder. You don't need to apply texture over texture. So you don't need that. Right. So I've neutralized the tone on my lid and I used an eyeshadow base, right? Even um, you have a lot of drugstore brands in India that have good eyeshadow bases as well. You have PAC, you have Lani, you have Wet n Wild. Uh, you know, you, there are a lot of brands that does very good eyeshadow primers. So you can use anything that you like, okay? All right, now I'm going to start off with my 
eye makeup, all right? Now I, I have a lot of eyeshadows here. I'm going to use a Juvia's Place eyeshadow palette. It's one of the best eyeshadow palettes that I love. Personally, I love Juvia's Place eyeshadows. If you haven't tried Juvia's Place eyeshadows, please do because they are highly pigmented, really good blend and amazing on uh, you know women with color. It's amazing very good tones. Now the palette that I have here is, um, you know, Juvia's Place Saharan palette, which is amazing. It has a lot of neutral tones, a lot of warm tones as well. Uh, I'm going to use this black here, okay? And I have some brown here as well. So I'm going to use the black eyeshadow. And I'm going to use a flat brush. This is a flat eyeshadow brush. This is a flat eyeshadow brush. And as um, artists, ensure that every single time you work on a client, your brushes are clean. Do not use unclean, unsanitized products on a client. Ensure that you clean your products really, really well. Now this um, is a flat eyeshadow brush. You can use from any brand, anything that you like, right? So I'm just going to apply this on the outer corner of my eyes. I'm just, just dabbing it and placing it on the outer corner of my eyes. Right. I'm just placing this in the outer corner of my eyes. It's quite matte black. Okay. I have hooded eyes, right? I have slight hooded eyes, not completely. I have partial hooded eyes. Okay. So you need to really uh, when you work with hooded eyes, you know, you, I hope you know what is hooded eyes. So when you work with hooded eyes, ensure that you really accentuate the crease area because that will make your eyes stand out. So you need to really, really accentuate the crease area. And don't drag the eyeshadow, just push and place the eyeshadow on the outer corner. And ensure your eyeshadow do not go outside this angle. This is the angle by which you need to work your eyeshadows. Now, this is your entire eyelid area. If, you, if your eyeshadow goes below this area, it can make your eyes look droopy, all right? Now, I'm going to take a nice blending brush. I love blending brushes like these. Um, I'm going to use this. And I'm going to take another eyeshadow. Just give me a second. Now, this is uh, one of my favorite eyeshadows from Juvia's again. This is the Masquerade palette. They have beautiful matte eyeshadows, beautiful colors. So if you're looking for a very good, highly pigmented uh, eyeshadow, go for this, yeah? And um, I'm going to use a bit of brown, a nice brown color, a warm brown. I'm just going to blend this black. Take a blending brush, okay? Take your eyeshadow in a blending brush, do not blow on it. It's unhygienic. You need to take the eyeshadow, tap off, all right? And I'm going to really blend and buff this eyeshadow, all right? A bit of warmth on the, as a transition. So we are going to just buff this. Use circular motions and buff it in. Always ensure, take your eyeshadow and tap off. Tap off the eyeshadow. Do not blow on it. I have seen umpteen artists do that. Don't blow. You need to really... And keep your hands behind. Do not keep like this. You're putting too much pressure on your brush. Let the bristles do the job. Keep your um, hand behind, right? and really buff the eyeshadow, let the bristles do the job. And work in circular motions. So take your eyeshadow, tap off the excess and work in circular motions. I've, uh, I also want to tell you, like, do not take a lot of eyeshadow and pop it here. You do not want to make this area sink in. You know, you want to bring it out. So you do not apply a lot of dark colors here. The only time when we use dark eyeshadow is from your eyelid on the side and use, like when you do a halo eye routine, like a spotlight halo eye. Uh, so other than that, you don't use um, dark colors here. Always ensure when you uh, do your makeup, uh, eyeshadows always go like light to dark, 
it always goes from light to dark and always try and see it goes from shimmer to matte so you can go for completely matte or completely shimmer as well you can do that but it's always better you go from shimmer to matte right I'm just buffing the brow as a nice transitional shade because there's, I want a lot of warmth in this area. I really want a lot of warmth, okay? Now, the multicom that I'm gonna be using today is, as I said, a green with a lot of purple shift. Now, what I'm going to do, the major color that you will see in this particular multicrome is green. Now, what I'm going to do is the shift is towards purple. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bit more dark purple, matte eyeshadow, and blend it. This crease area has to be dark. Only then the multichrome will pop out, right? So I'm going to take purple, right? I'm going to take a nice purple eyeshadow. Give me a second. So I've used brown and I'm going to accentuate this crease area with a purple, like a deep purple color. So I'm gonna take a pointed crease brush. This is mine and that's the reason it has a bit of product. I can use it, but I, uh, you have, when you use on clients, ensure that it's clean, all right? Now the matte eyeshadow that I'm gonna use, this is from Viseart. This is a Viseart palette. It's absolutely fantastic for makeup artists. They are supremely pigmented and easier to blend. You get it in India, all right? Slightly expensive, but really, really worth the price if you're looking for a very good matte, colorful eyeshadow palette. Now I'm gonna take this bra purple and I'm gonna tap off the excess. I'm gonna place this here. I'm going to place this in this area. I have hood, so it's slightly difficult because of the hooded area. If you have any questions, uh, everyone, you can uh, very well ask me in between. So, uh, you know, feel free. <laughs> All right. In the meantime, when I blend, okay. Blending is the key, uh, you know, guys, like your blending should be really, really good. So I've placed the purple matte eyeshadow on the crease line and my blending brush, I'm taking it in, no eyeshadow. I'm just going to buff this eyeshadow. I'm really going to buff this eyeshadow. You can take it outwards if you want so that your eyes look a bit more elongated. So if you want, you can really take it outwards as well. So as you can see, I've accentuated this crease area. Here, I haven't accentuated. The reason I use purple, as I said, the multi-chrome, you have to always keep in mind when you use multi-chrome, the crease area is, should be dark. Only then the multi-chrome will pop out. All right, you don't have to do any cut crease or anything, but your crease area should be a bit dark. And the color that you can use, you can use black or anything like that, deeper colors. But I always believe that when you see the shift in colors, the, there's a one prominent color which you see in daylight. And there's another shift when you turn the eyeshadow. That shift color, take that eyeshadow, the shift color, and take matte form of that eyeshadow and place it deep in the crease area. And that's the trick when it comes to multi-chromes, right? Okay, now again, I'm you know, just placing the purple on the crease area here. You might think it is difficult, but it's not. <laughs> Trust me, it's not difficult. Uh, so Lakshmi, we have a question for you. Uh, mm -hmm. so the multi-chromatic look, the eye look, uh, mm -hmm. for what event would you suggest a makeup artist to uh, use this look on their client? Rides, reception, <laughs> that's the best way because on stage it looks beautiful. When someone comes to wish the bride on stage or just to congratulate, they will see the shift in colors and it's absolutely mesmerizing. <laughs> so you can use it anytime. It's kind of like you can use it anytime, but shoots, we do not do uh, for shoots much because there's, a, there's this shift in color. So I would recommend it for brides, uh, for reception. Reception, it looks amazing with the lehengas and colorful outfits, it looks beautiful. So I'm just placing this purple mat on the crease line. 
again, taking my blending brush, no product at all. And they're just buffing this in, right? Just you need to really buff it in and use wind wiper motion. I hope you know what is the wind wiper motion. It goes like that. So just blending it in. And you can elongate, if you want, your eyes look, look very elongated. You can just slightly elongate it, but don't do the whole triangle thing like that. It just doesn't look very pretty. So you can go like a very smoky, like it goes like that. <laughs> that looks very pretty. If you want your eyes to look very dramatic and elongated, it goes, gives like a cat eye look, right? So um, this is what I've done. Now, what I'm going to do, on the outer corner where I place the black, I'm just going to place a little more black so that it looks really tacked in before I apply uh, the multi -crow. okay? So again, I'm gonna take my flat brush and place my black. Now, a lot of uh, uh, makeup artists uh, have, uh, you know, they make this mistake of using flat brush. They take the eyeshadow and they just take eyeshadow on one side and then they use the other side and again they use the other side don't do that you have to always use one side don't use or take eyeshadow and pack on eyeshadow on both the sides you do not do that because it will you are actually uh, <laughs> uh, you know uh, it will actually fall out you know it just fall down on the side so you don't want that so just always ensure that you use one side of your brush of the extent I'm just going to place it here on the outer corner just so that there's a bit of dimension on the outer corner side and I'm going to just pack it in and I'm going to again take my blending brush second a nice poofy <laughs> blending brush. And I'm just going to just in circular motion, just blend it in. Understand uh, when you do makeup, it should be very harmonious, it should be cohesive. Uh, do not uh, just apply eyeshadow for the sake of applying eyeshadow. You need to ensure that it looks cohesive. It goes with the outfit. It goes with uh, the, uh, you know, the bride's personality, everything, you know. And there's a lot of sync between the eyeshadow, the blush, and the lip. It should look very harmonious, yeah? Always keep that in mind uh, as makeup artists when you work. Now, uh, I'm going to start placing this pigment. Uh, this is from JD Glow Cosmetics, uh, the multi-chrome eyeshadow. It has a dent because I used quite a bit. I love this eyeshadow. It's beautiful. I hope I can show you the uh, swatch of it. Um, this is how the swatch is. Um, I think it is doing justice, <laughs> hopefully, because uh, this gives you like a nice multi-chrome effect. Um, this has purple and green, and it's very, very pretty, all right? Give me a second, I'll just take a tissue. Okay. Right, so I'm going to place this green. You don't have to do any kind of cut crease or anything like that for this, because I know a lot of artists love to do cut crease. You don't have to do that. You can if you want, but you don't have to. So I'm going to take this eyeshadow and I'm going to really pack it in to my eyelid using a flat brush. I'm going to use a flat brush and I'm going to pack it into my eyelid. You can also use your fingers. There's no, uh, this thing, restriction, you shouldn't do use your fingers. You can take your fingers and pack as well because your fingers are amazing to pack on pigments and eyeshadows. You can very well do that. So as you can see, it goes like this. Right. I hope it's clear in Zoom. Uh, so Lakshmi, while using multi-chromatic eyeshadows, uh, does a makeup artist need to use like a eyeshadow glue or anything to, for make it to make it last longer? No, you don't need a glue, but you can use Mac Fix Plus. You can use like a primer. You can use Mac Fix Plus, and that will uh, you know. 
uh, take the pigment out. Um, you know, you know, Mac Fix Plus, right? Which is like a setting spray. You can use that. Even Urban Decay has an all-nighter spray, which is also amazing. But you don't necessarily need that. You can have a nice dense flat brush, and that will pick the pigment. Ensure you, uh, your brush is dense. And if you have natural hair uh, brushes, then it's really good to work with powder uh, pigments and eyeshadows. So not that I, um, you know, recommend it all the time because it's not cruelty free. But if you have natural hair brushes, you can uh, very well use it uh, to glaze eyeshadows. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And you can very well use your finger. There's no problem in using your finger. You can very well use that as well. As you already know, like from uh, MAC, you have a lot of pigments. Uh, you get a lot of pigments from MAC. You have mini pigments, mini bottles. You have big, big uh, bottle pigments as well, which a lot of makeup artists use. It's on similar basis as well. So you can use Fix Plus, just wet your brush. You can actually put that in. Or you can, because this is a pressed form. This is not a powder form. You can use your brush and use. But if you have a pigment, you can use it like any other pigment that you would use. Right? <laughs> So I'm just blending this area up so that it looks very pretty. I hope Zoom is cap <laughs> catching the whole multi-chrome thing. And it's very, very pretty in real life. Yeah, we can see it shift on camera. So it you can see the shift stunning right, right now. Oh, fantastic. Like, I hope you can see the shift. It's very pretty because you can use it. See, if you're a very talented makeup artist, you can actually use green and purple, like two separate eyeshadows and create that gradients. You can do that. We, love, we, have, we have been doing that for a while, but you have shortcuts now. <laughs> so you, you have just one singular product that you can use and you can create that shift. You know, it's very, very pretty. And when you wear the lashes and lenses and everything, it looks absolutely stunning. Okay. So, um, so that's what I've done. I've just blended the crease line and everything. And so you can see the shift. It goes like that with the purple. And uh, now let me finish the entire uh, base and uh, entire look. And uh, I, I don't have a lot of fallout, but just in case, I'll just take a little bit of micellar water and just uh, give it a cleanse uh, under my eyelids, just in case if there is any kind of fallout, because multi-chromes fall out <laughs> quite a bit. You can use shadow shields here. A lot of artists use powder, like, you know, um, older times, you know, a lot of makeup artists used to place a lot of powder here and, you know, just to catch fallout, but I do not recommend it because it can make this area look very dry. So you don't need that. It just makes your textural issues worse. So you don't need that. Now, let me take my cotton pad just to wipe under my eyes. So um, when you do very extensive eye makeup routines, you can just do your eye first and then do the base, yeah? So give me a second. <laughs> so I'm taking cotton pad and uh, there's a trick, um, you know, we teach uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, professional makeup. Uh, you can actually use your silicone primer and just wipe off uh, as well. You don't need a micellar water. You can use a silicone primer uh, as well. So, you know, you don't need to use a wipe or anything like that. So you can do that. Take a bit of primer in the back of your hand and use it. Well, I'm just using my cellar at the moment. So not much of uh, this thing fallout because uh, JD Glow is kind of pressed. But if you work with a pigment like Europe Girl or any brands like that, it, you may have fallout, all right? So anyways, my eyeshadow is quite uh, blended. Now, Right, now I'm going to fill in my pores uh, because I have a lot of uh, textural issues on my skin. So I'm going to use a, a pore filler. Don't use it on dry skin, don't use, because there are a lot of primers in the market, but just because there are a lot of products, don't use it on everybody. That's what I said, you know, study your client's skin first. Now this primer is from Smashbox, it's a pore minimizer. This has a lot of silicone in it. It's quite dry. Uh, it's good for people who have textural issues, a lot of oils to block. Do not use this primer on anybody with dry skin. You will get these balls in you know, a textural issue. It just will fall off. The foundation wouldn't last. So this is uh, the pore minimizer from Smashbox. One of my absolute favorite primers for people with oily combination uh, skin and also dry skin. This gives, uh, this is kind of like a skin-like color and it's really nice to fill in your pores and just to block oil. Another option that you have, if you have a lot of oil issue, like if you get a lot of um, oils from your skin, um, 
you know, in a short period of time, is you can use like a Forsali liquid powder that you will get in the market. Now you get it in Nika. So you can buy that. Forsali is liquid powder. It's an amazing product. Um, but I use this. I've been using it for a long time. So I like the Smashbox pore minimizer. All right. So Lakshmi, yeah. while you're doing your base makeup, um, I have a small rapid fire for you. So uh, shall we get started with that? Oh, absolutely. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> so the first question is, uh, what would your go-to three-step makeup routine be? Foundation. I am too addicted to foundation <laughs> that I've, you have used it for uh, from the past, uh, every single day from the past many, many years. So foundation is a must for me. I do not go step out without foundation. So that's a must. I love a blush. I really, really love a blush because it brings color and life back into your skin. And uh, a lipstick. Uh, lipstick would be amazing because I am addicted to lipsticks. I have so many lipsticks, like 300 lipsticks. I love lipsticks, so I'm addicted to lipsticks. So these three is my go-to. <laughs> All right. So the second question we have is what would you choose? Bold eyes or bold lips? Oh, bold lips, please, because I love, as I said, I love lipsticks. It just takes, a, you know, just a few minutes to just dab it on and just run outdoors. So, uh, but I love eye makeup, but uh, yeah, it just depends on the time. I love both, <laughs> but I would say lips because it's still, you can just do it every, any, every single time, you know, you don't have okay. to, there's no fuss there. <laughs> so could you like quickly give us your top three favorite lipsticks since you love lipsticks? <laughs> all right uh okay this is very tough for me very very tough because i have like so many favorites um one lipstick uh, i love is stila uh, there's a brand called stila which i absolutely love i've used for a very long time they are kind of like the pioneers that started liquid lipsticks so i love their shade base so which is a beautiful red it suits everyone like everyone says about macro Bebo. for me <laughs> that's not my go-to red it's just so drying and just it, it just doesn't look I don't know. It's just not sharp enough for me. For me, I love Stila's base. So it's just beautiful red. It's absolutely amazing. And it's a true red that suits every skin tone and it just brightens your face like no other's business. So it's, <laughs> it's amazing. Another lipstick that I love is called Raisin Hell from Lime Crime. I really love Lime Crime, another a lipstick brand which I absolutely adore. And Lime Crime's Raisin Hell has a, a bit of metallic shift to it. It's maroony with a bit of metallic shift and it's absolutely gorgeous. And it suits like ethnic outfits when you wear a Kanchi Pram Sari or a nice lehenga, uh, a nice black outfit with this nice maroony metallic lip with a nice smoky eye it was just sexy like hell. So. Uh, it's a very nice it's not metallic to a, 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 a to a very like um it, it doesn't look too metallic or glittery but it looks absolutely gorgeous um uh, and there are so many lipsticks like <laughs> and another lipstick uh, a nude i'll give you a nude lipstick that i love and it's from mac and this is called modesty and i will purchase modesty for the rest of my life i'll keep repurchasing because it's my go-to nude it's so beautiful with a smoky eye and when you wear a smoky eye or very sexy sultry i have a lot of glitter and a lot of oomph i think modesty will just really dim this area down and just bring your eyes out so modesty perfect for uh, fair to medium skin tones beautiful nude i absolutely love it today i'm going to demo modesty for you so <laughs> i've kept it here it's kind of like my go-to so these are the three colors okay great uh so uh while talking about lipsticks what's your preferred finish matte or creme oh matte <laughs> i'm matte. a big time mattaholic <laughs> like i love matte lipsticks like anything because i think uh, creamy is very nice like glossy lips are very nice but it doesn't last on me like especially with a mask on these days you can't wear anything glossy and creamy it just transfers so matte and really sharp lip i really like a nice uh sharpened lip uh, jaw and i don't like to look very blunt on the lips i really like to look very painted and very sharp <laughs> Great. Uh, so uh, what is your favorite color palette? Would you go to neutral or the colorful side of uh, makeup? Mix. I think neutrals are very important. Uh, brights, as such, I love bright colors. I'm a big, big time colorful person. I love everything colorful. I love everything bright. But I think without neutrals, you cannot do anything because you need that neutral tones to create transitions. You can do multiple things when you have neutrals. Brights, you kind of restrict it. You, do, you cannot do a lot of things with brights alone. So I think neutrals is very, very important. 
Okay, and uh, what is your favorite category for skincare products? Category in the sense? Uh, like, is your favorite go-to pro skincare product like a moisturizer or lip balm or a mask? What is it? So in that sort. <laughs> I have a lot of favorites. Uh, now, um, I love La Roche-Posay. Uh, it's a very good uh, French for, French brand for their skincare. And it's amazing. Like they have amazing skincare from uh, La Roche-Posay. I also like uh, CeraVe. There's a brand called CeraVe. And they do amazing cleansers. And it's amazing for dry skin. They have, it's not too stripping. It's not too drying. It will not harm your skin. I think most uh, of the time uh, people go wrong when it comes to uh, skin skincare, you know, what brands they choose and whether the products they choose is good for their, their own skin. Now, as makeup artists, they need to have something very generic that will suit everything, doesn't have any kind of harm, harmful ingredients, nothing too drying and stripping. So CeraVe is a very good option if you're looking for very good uh, products. Now, I think uh, Simple is a very good job. You know, it's a very affordable brand I've used for a very long time. I was living in the UK, so I've been using Simple ever since I've been living in the UK. And now, uh, luckily, it's available in India. So very, very good products. Um, I also love Dr. Jots. There's a brand called Dr. Jots, and they do amazing skincare. But unfortunately it's not available in india in india there are so many indie skincare brands now they do amazing dogs uh, job like you have dr shits it's really nice uh, when it comes to your daily exfoliating uh, toners and uh, serums and everything they're amazing dr shits there's another brand called uh, shesha beauty which i've been uh, loving in the past two months or so because Chesha Beauty does a lot of natural based ingredients, you know, not a lot of, uh, uh, not that I'm against chemicals because as human beings, I believe we are composed of a lot of chemicals. So I don't think chemical as such or natural as such is going to be good for you, but they do a very good job with your skincare. So I really like uh, Shesha Beauty, uh, you know, when it comes to their masks, they do very good, um, you know, your daily masks and all that kind of stuff. So I really love Shesha Beauty. Um, and for lip care, I love uh, Laneige, they have their nice sleeping lip mask, which is amazing. And nothing better than good old ghee for your lip. I think ghee is amazing for your lip. Also good extra virgin coconut oil. You have good extra virgin coconut oil. Uh, you know, that will do the job to get your lip up and ready for any kind of uh, uh, lipstick that you need to wear. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the last question is one uh, makeup error that you just can't agree with like maybe too much too cakey skin or uh, patchy makeup so what is the one thing that just you detest in makeup like the one makeup faux pas that you have uh, I have quite a few actually, but I'll tell you one. One is baking, uh, baking technique. I've seen, see, the thing is we live in one of those worlds where we see a lot of influencers and YouTube and we see a lot of uh, unrealistic stuff on Instagram as well, because there's a lot of editing that goes behind and there's a lot of camera, there's a lot of uh, soft lights in front of them. But when you work as an artist, you have to ensure that your makeup is a game changer in daylight. It's very important for your makeup to look nice in daylight and on camera it's not just one or the other you have it has to look on both the schemes like it has to look beautiful in daylight and it has to look beautiful on camera so it has to be blended and one thing i see is people do not uh, you, you know you, <laughs> a lot of baking techniques and a lot of brands that promote their products by promoting baking technique. Now, I'm not against baking technique. It was used in drag makeup many, many years back. I love drag makeup, but it doesn't work all the time. Powders, <laughs> you shouldn't overuse powders. Powders absorb moisture. It creates texture. And in real life, you will see these lines and texture that might not exist at all in your skin. So I think uh, one of those things that I've seen is people, uh, you know, like baking under the jawline and uh, under your contour and under the eyes and you just too, use too much powder don't do that. You just don't need so much concealer. You don't need so much powder. You don't need a lot of color correction. I see people who color correct like no one's business. You don't need so much color correction. The foundations and the base products have coverage. They have pigments. It is meant to camouflage. You use color correction when your skin or your client's skin require it. When you have a lot of pigmentation issues, you have melasma, you work on a burn victim, you have 
uh, in age to be, uh, you know, somebody who's got mature skin and a lot of dark circles. Uh, even that's the situation when you use a lot of color correction or if you have someone who have got a lot of hyperpigmentation, like a different tone altogether uh, around the mouth and maybe a lot of sun damage on the forehead, you know, they go in the two wheeler and stuff. So that is when you use a lot of color correction. You don't use color correction every single time you work on a bride. You don't need it. <laughs> Okay, so great. Uh, so we can finish up the base makeup now? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I hope this was uh, helpful. Yeah. <laughs> Very helpful. I'm sure the audience uh, got a few tips and tricks that they needed to hear. Perfect. Sounds great. <laughs> so, uh, guys, so I, I've used this primer and I did apply on this area of my face because, as I said, I have combination skin and I don't need primer on this side. I really don't need it. I have used primarily on my nose where I get really oily. I have a bit of chicken pox marks here, like a, 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 <laughs> like a texture here and a couple of texture here on the um, on my cheek area as well because I get a lot of acne. Um, you know, I stress out, I get acne. So it's just, I'm very very, very acne prone. So I've used that and um, I've just let it set into my skin. Now the foundation that I'm going to use today is from Estee Lauder. Estee Lauder Double Wear is a cult favorite classic uh, foundation that many of you are familiar with. I love it. It's a tad bit on the expensive side, but beautiful. It's a beautiful foundation. It's a little heavy, full coverage. It gives you like a matte finish. All right, it gives you a nice soft matte finish. Now, um, uh, you know, I know a lot of artists use Huda Beauty. I, I know like people love Huda Beauty and I, I agree, like Huda Beauty is a very good foundation. You can use Huda Beauty's Beauty as well. Perfect foundation when you work for as a makeup artist, but do not use this on sensitive skin. It's highly fragranced. It's so perfumed, so do not use it on clients who are have any kind of who are prone to any kind of sensitivity because it can give rise to rashes, can give rise to uh, you know like bumps on their face and stuff, redness and any kind of itchiness because it's very potent. It's dunked in fragrance, so do not use it. I know a lot of people love Huda Beauty, so that's the reason I thought um, I'll let you know. And now to talk about my skin tone as such. Now I have. A uh, warm, leaving a little bit neutral uh, undertones. Now, if you have studied about undertones, you know very well that um, you know, when you work, uh, you have three different types of undertones. You have warm undertone, you have cool undertone, you have neutral undertone. And for me, I have a bit of neutral tones on my face, but my neck, my neck and my shoulder area is quite warm. It has a lot of yellow in it. Now, when I apply foundation, I always apply foundation that matches my neck area. When you see a client as well, you have to see that your client's uh, foundation matches their client's neck and shoulder and chest area. You have to observe the entire area and see that it's very harmonious and cohesive. Don't apply one tone on the face and it just looks like you've applied a mask. Don't do that. You have to ensure that it's blended really well and looks cohesive. Now for me, I have a bit of peachy tones on my cheeks and uh, area I get a bit red near my nose and stuff. And I apply foundation is yellow. I apply warm based foundation. Uh, the number that I use is 3W2 uh, Cashew. And uh, just to give you a reference, I am a MAC NC35 uh, in Studio Fix Fluid. And um, when it comes to MAC Studio Stick Foundation, I'm an NC30. So that's my uh, natural skin tone color. And the one I use is Double Wear. Um, from Estee Lauder, right? And um, just shake the bottle really well. <laughs> shake the bottle really well. And I'm going to use a flat kabuki brush and you can use any kind of flat angled kabuki brush. This is an angled uh, flat kabuki brush. This is from Sigma. You can use any kind of foundation brush. You can use a flat one. You can use an angular one. Angled is good to get into the bone structure and through the perimeters of your face as well. So it's really, really nice. Sigma is one of my favorite brushes. So I use that for applying base. Um, you know, I've been using it for a while. Now I'm going to use the back of my hand. Um, another thing um, as makeup artists, you need to keep in mind that uh, if, if the client that you work for uh, is going to go into a very hot temperature, let's say in Kerala or Tamil Nadu or any of these uh, places where it's very, very hot or in summer season, um, ensure that uh, you check whether the foundation oxidizes because found, uh, oxidization actually means when your foundation pigments react with the oxygen and the oils in your skin. So when you're using a matte finish foundation, there's a lot of tendency for the foundation to oxidize. 
So you need to check that, all right? Now, um, the found I've taken a foundation on the back of my hand and I'm not gonna mix anything here. This is a matte finish. Now un understand because I have textural issues on my skin and I have a bit of pores and stuff, I'm going to uh, not buff my foundation. I'm just going to stipple my foundation, stippling uh, matlab, I'm just going to just dab the foundation and blend it. And I'm going to ensure that my foundation, when you apply, when I apply this foundation, it would look as though I've not, uh, it doesn't match my skin, but it matches my neck, right? So when you see in real life, I have ring light here. So uh, when you see in real life, it matches my neck really well. So I'm going to take a little bit of foundation. I'm not going to put any kind of illuminator or anything like that because if it's shiny, it will show, my texture will show out. So I'm going to take a bit of foundation. I'm going to work from the inside part of my face and I'm not going to buff. I'm going to just stipple because I have a layer of primer underneath. You don't want your foundation and primer to move. So that is the thing with color corrector as well. I've seen a lot of artists work with color corrector and just buff foundation on top. Do not do that. You need to always stipple your foundation and do not apply foundation under your eyes. You do not have to apply foundation under your eyes. I'm stippling and dabbing the foundation. If I use anything shiny here, this is going to show out. In real life, in daylight, it will show out. It's as simple as that because daylight is not forgiving. Now, the purpose why, um, you know, you apply foundation is to even out your skin tone. So you need to really even out your skin tone. I'm just tippling the foundation. I'm taking little by little and stippling the foundation. I need more coverage in this area because I have acne. I just had a breakout season now. So, <laughs> so I have acne there. Now to all those makeup artists who are watching, when you use a beauty sponge, I know a lot of you love using beauty sponges. Now it's a coronavirus season. I do not recommend using a beauty sponge because it's considered to be very, very unhygienic. So if you are somebody who love beauty sponges, ensure that you sanitize, you deep clean every single time and you clean it thoroughly because product absorbs into your sponge as well. And do not forget beauty sponges expire every three months. So that's something you need to very well keep in mind, All right? As you see, I'm actually dabbing the foundation and applying it to my neck as well. And I'm applying a bit of foundation on my ear area. You need to apply on your ear as well. You need to apply on your neck as well, okay? Now it's very, very normal when you apply foundation, you look a bit blank and flat because you lose dimensions in your skin. You use all the bone structure and shadowy area and the light area and everything. You look like a plain, blank canvas and that's just very normal. I know many of your makeup artists understand what I mean. So ensure you apply in the ear area as well, right? Take your time with your base. If your base goes for a toss, everything goes for a toss. Do not apply anything under the eyes. Don't, you do not, do not apply anything under the eyes. You're going to go for a concealer. So you don't need foundation there. Do not layer. Uh, products unnecessarily, right? And blend it through the hairline as well. You don't win, want any kind of streaks here. So blend it through the hairline. So I hope you can see it's uh, camouflaged. So to all those artists who use beauty blenders, be a bit careful, <laughs> right? Because it's not uh, considered quite sanitary. Beauty blenders are not considered very sanitary. Now, excuse me, let me drink some water. <laughs> My throat feels dry. I hope that's all right. <laughs> Anyways, so um, I'm going to fill in my eyebrows. So you can use any kind of eyebrow fillers and use an angled uh, eyebrow brush to fill in eyebrows. Um, you need to use an angled brush. 
Um, there are a lot of brands that does amazing drugstore, high-end brands that do, uh, does amazing eyebrow products. You have Anastasia does a wonderful job with their eyebrow products. They're known for it. Uh, the one that I'm going to use today is from City Color. It's a, it's a drugstore brand. Amazing, amazing product. And uh, they have three eyeshadows and uh, I mean, brow, <laughs> brow fillers, powders, and they have cream as well. So uh, this is my personal one, so, which I'm going to use. And do not use black. I see a lot of artists who use black. Do not use black, all right? Now, when it comes to eyebrows, brush through the eyebrows. Uh, ensure that it doesn't look like you're going for dance. It, it needs to look very elegant when you uh, fill in the eyebrows. And um, you know, like naturally, your eyebrows go from light to dark. So um, you need to go darker in the arch area so that you give your face a bit of a lift. But do not go very dark on the inside area because it can look too, look too harsh. Now, I'm just going to draw a small line here under the eyebrows. Now, this is called a spoolie. So you can brush through if you want, uh, you know, just to um, blend it through and I'm just going to draw a bit of line here forget the front area okay I'm just going to work on the part where it's much more denser try and use brown or you can use uh, we always say that uh, try and use an uh, um, you know a brow color which is one tone lighter than your natural hair color so that is uh, that gives you a softer look do not use black. It doesn't give a softer look. It looks a bit harsh. And it can also give you like a kind of like a rude look. You know, it just makes you look like that. So you don't want that. <laughs> so now the way a lot of uh, artists, you need to keep in mind where your eyebrows naturally needs to end. Now take your brush. Hold it uh, on this side, the the uh, this edge here. Take a brush like that and hold. And this is where your eyebrows need to end, right? This is where your eyebrows need to end. And you see this edge here, this ridge here. This is where your eyebrows need to start. Okay, that's how you need to always keep that in mind when you work on a client, right? I do not like to really make eyebrows so dark that it looks really stark. But uh, when you do good eye makeup, eyebrows are very important. It frames your face. So it's very, very important. Now I'm going to take a little bit of lighter color and just going to fill this area. I'm not going to do like a box. Like sometimes you get a nice box here. I really don't want to do that. I'm just going to naturally fill it up. Just looks very, very soft and just brush through with a spoolie. Now, as makeup artists, what you need to do, I hope you can see, as makeup artists, what you need to do, you get these disposable uh, spoolies, which you can use as mascara wands and um, to comb through your eyebrows, use that, all right? So I'm gonna use uh, the same technique and uh, fill in my brows here as well. In the meantime, if you have any questions, you can ask me by the time uh, I'm filling the brows, so you don't uh, want to miss out asking me anything. So I'm just filling it in. You know, sometimes, you know, you need concentration when you fill in eyebrows. <laughs> so you need to, uh, yeah. And we always say that we try and, uh, you know, ensure that it's as even as possible but uh, as human beings we are not very symmetric <laughs> we're not we're not proportionate it's just as simple as that we say eyebrows are uh, they're not twins they're sisters you know we always say that so no two eyebrows are the same so we try and uh, you know make it as even as possible but uh, yeah <laughs> So just because your you know, client's one eyebrow is different than the other, everyone's is different than the other. Okay. I've used a powder. You can use cream, you can have gels, you can use anything that you like. Um, you know, it just totally depends. You also have brow setting gels in you know, a brow mascaras that you can use to set your eyebrows so that it doesn't move at all. 
for morning functions, like if you're working for a morning event or a morning function, do not apply anything very, very dark on the eyebrows. It looks really a lot. Make it quite soft. Right, I hope you can see. It's not too dark here, right? I hope this is clear, right? And um, now I'm going to finish off the rest of the stuff. Now I want to apply my concealer and my eyeliner as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Inglot gel liner, which is my favorite gel liner. If you're looking for a very good gel liner, take Inglot gel liner. It's black as as hell, <laughs> it's just black and it's amazing. It's one of those gel liners that if you really want, are looking for a very good gel liner to invest in, I've used it for a very, very long time. It's still one of my absolute favorites. So uh, it's number 77 gel liner from Inglot. It's it's damn good um, as makeup artist. And as makeup artist, keep a Dura line always, always, because Inglot Dura line is very, very handy. Uh, it's good to loosen and thin uh, gel liners. You can use it to create your own, um, you know, uh, colorful uh, liquid liners. You can get pow powder eyeshadows mixed with a little bit of Duraline and create your own uh, colorful eyeliners to create different kind of looks. You can do that. It's beautiful. All right. Now, when you work in the field, uh, you know, when you work uh, on a client, uh, you need to take a little bit of gel liner uh, on a spatula, put it on a steel palette and use. Now, this is mine, so I can use it. But if you're working, you need to scrape a little bit of gel liner on uh, using a spatula, pop it onto a steel palette and use it from there. Do not just dip your brush here and use. Don't do that, yeah? So I've just applied a bit of Dura line so that it's a little more thin. So that's a little more smoother and I'm going to apply and this is a Zoeva brush uh, and I'm going to just apply my um, liner. I'm not creating anything fussy, like I'm not doing any kind of wing, I'm not going to do anything uh, as such, I'm just going to keep it very simple and I'm going to draw a very thin line. You want your eyeshadow to stand out, but if you really want to draw a wing, you can. It's an artist's choice, you know, like if you really want to draw a wing, you, can, you very well can. <laughs> Right, so I'm not going to do that today. Okay. All right, so I'm just going to let my Dura line dry a bit. And uh, now I'm going to take a concealer. And I have two concealers here. One is light, one is a bit dark. Um, I have Estee Lauder Double Wear Concealer in 3W Medium, which is good for me. And I have Too Faced um, Shade in Medium as well. And um, just to brighten slightly on the light side, do not apply very light concealers under your eyes. It can look ashy. Don't do that. Now, I see a lot of artists who overuse and over apply concealers. Don't, you don't need too much concealer. I'll show you how to apply a concealer. So I'm going to take a little bit of concealer. I'm going to mix it up, right? And what I, what we have to do is take a flat brush, all right? And apply on the inner corner first. This is the area where you get dark. And light needs to bounce from here, all right? And you need a bit of concealer here. That's all you need. You don't need a lot of concealer, right? And just push your concealer in, just push the concealer. You want your inner corner to brighten. You need this area to brighten. So push and take the residue everywhere else. You don't need all that triangles, <laughs> all that every single time. You don't need it. Do not use um, cream concealers, like you know the MAC Studio Fix Concealer. Do not use that under the eyes all the time because that can crease eventually. So you need to be a bit, uh, you need to be a bit wary when you apply the MAC Studio finish concealer. I see a lot of artists do that. It's 
way, way too waxy and emollient. So it's meant for face. So you can use as a corrector, but do not use as a concealer under the eyes. You can use it on the face, but not under the eyes where you tend to have a lot of texture, you know. I hope you can see. Just dab, just dab, 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 dab. Push the product there. You can also use your fingers or use a flat brush. This is a flat foundation brush. It's perfect for applying concealers. Now this concealer is slightly light for my skin, but it's nice to bring the eyes forward. So I'm just, because it's a quite a dramatic eye makeup, so. I'm just dabbing it, okay? okay? Let it sit into my skin, just it needs to settle into the skin, yeah? Just give it a wee few minutes for it to settle into the skin, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to contour. In the meantime, when this settles into the skin, I can just uh, set it with a bit of powder, but I'm going to contour and I'm not gonna do any cream contour or anything like that. I'm just gonna take a normal contour brush and this is from BH Cosmetics, it's a contour brush. And I'm going to use a good old bronzer. I love bronzers, uh, give me a second. Yes, I'm going to use a bronzer. I love bronzers. Um, you know, this is from Too Faced. It's a very good bronzer. This is a chocolate bronzer. Smells like chocolate, love chocolate. <laughs> so it's a beautiful color. Ensure when you apply contour or bronzers uh, that you do not look like a zebra or you do not, and you ensure that your clients do not look like a zebra. You know what I mean? <laughs> it means like there's no harsh lines. I see a lot of harsh, harsh lines, like a dark color, then a light color, then a dark color and a light color. No, it, it needs to be blended really well. So I'm just going to take a bit of contour. I'm just going to place now. If you see, I have I have double chin. I have every layer you can possibly count. I have a couple of layers on my face. So I really need contour. So I'm just going to contour, but I'm not going to contour too much because yeah, I really don't want. I want my face shape to be the way it is. Um, you you know, initially, like many years back, when you studied makeup artistry, um, you know, it was thought that you need to always bring face to an oval structure. But now it's all about inclusivity, inclusivity of skin tones, inclusivity, and uh, and appreciating everyone for their own ethnicity and beauty and face shape and everything. So you don't need to change the face symmetry and structure to bring it into oval. You can actually, uh, you know, balance it or bring dimensions, but do not need to literally bring a person's face into oval, right? So I'm just going to contour just slightly. I don't want too much. So. Ensure you don't have a lot of lines on the face, yeah? Always tap off excess product. Do not apply too much product. And do not bring anything too dark here. Don't. This area, you have to be very careful when you work in the central portion of your face. Do not uh, bring anything too dark. And I'm going to contour this area, which is required. Now, when I go or do like, let's say I'm doing a heavier makeup, whereby I'm doing a, a heavier contouring and stuff, I will use a cream contour too bring this, uh, get this area in because I have a lot of skin here. So I might use a cream to bring this area inside. So it recedes, this area would recede when you, you contour, you know, so. I am very chubby. So, <laughs> so I need a lot of help there in that department. <laughs> so, but nevertheless, I'm not gonna do a lot of contouring and cream and stuff because it'll take a long time. So I'm just going to give it a natural contour, right? I know, 
you so much contour there's still there's no dent because i, I love to paste chocolate bronzer if you're looking for a very good bronzer now I've just applied uh you know contour and brought a bit of dimension so that this area goes a little in and uh, i'm going to apply a bit of blush and because i applied purple the blush that i'm going to apply is going to be a bit of plummy tone because this sings really well with the purple in the eyes and the blush i'm going to use is from mac and it's called plum foolery it's reached a dent because it's amazing it's beautiful and what i'm going to do is i'm going to avoid applying blush in this area for me because i have a lot of cheeks if we have very long face uh, or very angular face then you can bring a bit of blush on the cheeks apples but for me i cannot afford to do that because i have a lot of cheeks so i need to take my blush back so i'm going to take a bit of blush i'm going to use the same brush you don't need 10000 brushes you can use the same brush and above the contour and i'm going to apply the blush this area i'm going to take it like that like a c right That's where I need to concentrate my blush. I shouldn't concentrate blush on this side at all. That's not forgiving for me. It will make my cheeks out. <laughs> so, yeah. So I'm going to take blush as a C, right? So it will make my face a bit uh, more longer and lifted. So I'm going to take like a C. There's a technique where you can apply a bit of blush on the nose as well. It looks nice. If you want, you can do that. <laughs> I like to do it. So if you want like bronzers and blush, you can use apply because it looks nice and nice. <laughs> it looks nice. <laughs> right. Now, um, I know a lot of you like highlighters. I love highlighters. The highlighter that I've kept to use today is from uh, Laura Geller. That it's called Gilded Honey. Laura Geller is a beautiful brand. This highlight is amazing on Indian skin tone. Um, but I'm not going to use a lot of highlighter because I'm in a, a, one of those phases in my skin where I have a lot of texture and a lot of acne. So I'm not going to use a lot of uh, highlighter on my face. I'm going to use a little bit. Always, as I said, study the client's skin and apply products accordingly. Just because you learn to put uh, apply highlighter, you don't apply highlighter every single time. So I'm going to take a bit of, uh, you know, like a highlighter brush. And give me a second. I'm going to take the highlighter brush. All right. And I'm going to just take a little bit of highlighter and I'm going to just apply this. Okay. Any kind of, you can use a fan brush or you can use any kind of brush. But I'm just going to apply this where my light naturally hits. Do not apply highlighter here. I've seen a lot of artists do that. Do not apply here because that will bring out texture. If we have like uh, fillers and stuff and it's filled, then it's fine. If you do not have any texture, then it's fine. But if you have textural issues, do not apply highlighters, illuminators and stuff. And I'm going to apply a little bit on my cupid's bow, a bit on the chin area because I do not have any pimples here. And if you want, you can apply in the nose. I'm not going to do any nose contouring. So yeah. <laughs> um, now what I'm going to do is my concealer is kind of set. Now I'm going to take my flat brush again and dab it once more. Just so that I, it just sets. And then I'm going to take a powder brush. I'm going to take a powder brush and I'm going to use a pressed powder. You can use a pressed powder or you can use a loose powder like the MAC translucent powder. You can use that or you can use a pressed powder. You can use a Rimmel does a stay matte you have from MAC. Um, you know, you, what I'm going to use is from Charlotte Tilbury. I love Charlotte Tilbury's powder. It's one of my favorites. Um, you know, from her collection, powder is something that I love. It's finely milled. It's beautiful. It works perfectly for Indian skin tone. This is uh, number two perfect for Indian skin tone. Now the technique how I use with the powder brush is I take powder, tap off the excess, and I hold brush like this. Take your finger and hold your brush like this, and then apply on the client. That's it. You don't need a lot of powder, all right? Take your powder, tap off the excess, hold your brush like this so that you get the angle right. Do you see? You get that angle right. And then, that's it. 
You don't need to set your entire phase. Understand we used a matte finish foundation. When you use a matte finish foundation, that as such is powdery. It absorbs oil. It controls oil. So you do not need powder there. So I understand if you're using a satin finish or a dewy finish foundation, I understand you may need to, need to set a little bit, you know, where you crease and stuff. But if you don't, uh, you know, if you use a matte foundation, you don't need it, all right? Now, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a kajal. I love kajal pencils. I hope you love kajal pencils as well. You can use uh, a nude eyeliner. If you like a nude eyeliner, you can use that. Um, I'm gonna use a kajal because uh, I'm gonna make it really smoky. So I'm gonna use a nice black kajal. Any questions, uh, Payal? Uh, let me just check. Uh, so we have a question where someone asked, uh, how important is lighting and how to maneuver lighting while uh, while uh, doing a makeup look? It's always important when you do makeup that uh, you work in daylight. I think that's the most important thing. Don't see, like I would always uh, give an, an analogy where you know, I uh, ask students, you know, when you wear, go to buy sari blouses, when you go to a shop to buy sari blouses, uh, you always check your sari and your blouse and you do not buy it in the store light. You always take it to the nearest place where you see daylight so that because most, most of us have had blunders whereby we buy the blouse and we go home and you're like, it's a completely different color. Now, that's the same thing that happens when it comes to foundation as well. You need to always ensure there is daylight or we call it neutral light. When you're using a ring light, let's say you're um, working in a, in, a, uh, in a night time or when your work uh, is uh, in a, one of those places where you don't get a lot of natural light, you may carry ring lights. So when you have ring lights, ensure it is neutral where you don't have anything too warm or not too cool. It should be slightly yellow and not too yellow as well. It should be slightly yellow, neutral light. That's the most important uh, thing that you need to keep in mind. And daylight, uh, if possible, it's very important. If you can get daylight, uh, take your windows out and get, uh, you know, let the natural light seep through the window and place your client where you can actually see in daylight and then work foundation. So um, I also would recommend sometimes for South Indian brides, you know, uh, unlike North Indian brides, South Indian brides, uh, the way Things usually happen in the morning. So um, sometimes you have to start work uh, from three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock, and you might not have a real uh, you know, daylight. And by seven, 7.30, you need to get your bride up and ready. So uh, I would say, you know, finish your hairstyling, finish your, put a nice base and, uh, you know, do not finish the base. Do your eye makeup, finish your lip and everything, and then check when your light, sun starts coming out, you know, just check in daylight how, whether the foundation has oxidized, whether the foundation looks neat in daylight, and then do your finishing touches, you know, whereby you want to brighten the area, you can use a bit of a lighter foundation, just, you know, just on the center portion of your face, just buff the foundation in, it will brighten the area up, and uh, just check, you know, how you can, um, you know, tweak uh, when it comes to daylight. If you think the foundation looks a bit ashy in daylight take your bronzer take your bronzer and just uh, you know uh, just apply it on uh, perimeters where naturally light touches so you can just neutralize the tones so this is how you have to keep it in mind as a makeup artist i hope that was clear <laughs> I've just applied a kajal and the one that I've used, it's an amazing kajal. It's very affordable. You know, uh, people go for MAC kajals and all that. You don't need, the kajals are amazing in India. You have amazing options. And this is from a brand called Miss and Mrs. And this is a beautiful kajal, budge proof, black as hell. Like it's amazing. 650 rupees, you can't go wrong. And you will get from a website called Makeup Empire. And they, they I think they are the only distributors here. And they're amazing. It's waterproof, budge proof. It takes five minutes to set down and it's amazing. It's a very, very pretty, beautiful, beautiful uh, kajal. If you're looking for a good one, affordable one, yeah? So, um, so what I'm gonna do is I've applied kajal. Now, uh, people forget to uh, blend under the eyes. You need to really blend under the eyes as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take a bit of purple. Uh, I'm gonna take my Viseart palette 
just give me a second. Okay, I'm going to take my Vizyard palette, which is amazing. I love my matte Vizyard palette. And uh, because the crease color is purple, I'm going to take a bit of purple and use a smudger or a pencil brush. And I'm going to just smudge under the eyes. Smudging under your eyes is very, very important if you want your eyes to really stand out and look really, really nice. It makes your eyes pop. So it really, like you can see the difference. This eye looks really small because I've just drawn in the waterline. But when you apply and smudge through the lash line, it makes your eyes really stand out. So I've used purple because that's the whole thing uh, in today's look, right? You're using a lot of purple. So I've just used purple. Another trick what you can use for a look like this is where you use black and brown and smudge on your lash line and on the waterline you can use a nude eyeliner or you can use a purple eyeliner and you can get that whole look as well. It just depends on your creativity and how, and how far you want to take your look. So. So as you can see, I've just used matte purple eyeshadow and I'm just smudging the whole thing and you can see that eyeshadow goes like this it just doesn't droop out you have to always take it upwards so that uh, you get your face and features lifted you know don't want anything to droop like that all right and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, my good old blending brush, good old blending brush, and a bit of purple that I've used, and I'm just going to place it here. Like, I'm just tapping off the excess, I'm just going to go like, as you can see, it goes like that. So I'm gonna take that matte purple, not any shimmers, don't use any shimmers, you just want to smoke it out, so. Just here, bit of purple. So it goes like that. It gives eyes a very sexy <laughs> kind of look, you know. You don't want it to look patchy. It just needs to go like, foo. It goes like that, you know. That's the <laughs> animated version of how you want it to look. So it has to go like, foo. <laughs> All right. So I hope that was helpful. <laughs> All right. So. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bit of my highlighter and I'm going to pop it uh, in the inner corner of my eyes as well just to make my eyes stand out a little more. So I'm just going to pop a bit of highlighter in the inner corner so it can really uh, make your eyes uh, look open. So I'm going to apply a little bit here. You know, we have darkness and light bounces from that area, you know. And I'm going to take a little bit on this area where you have this arch, you know. So I'm just applying a little bit here. Don't want to take it here. You really don't want to take it here. It's This is the area where light bounces. So you want your eyebrows to lift. Now, if you want your eyebrows to, again, you know, sh look sharp, you can take your cream foundations or cream concealers and you can sharpen this area up. I mean, it, it just depends. If you want, you can do that. I'm not going to do that. Um, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take my tissue and just blot excess so lip balm that I may have. My lips look soft and it's ready uh, for my lip routine. So I'm just going to take my foundation brush, no excess foundation. I'm just going to blend it over my lips. So that my lips are a bit muted. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my lip liner. So take, I'm, I'm going to use, as I said, I'm going to use Max Modesty. It's a nice nude color. It's absolutely beautiful. It's perfect for people with uh, warm undertones and it's good for people with fair to medium skin tones. If you have anything above NC35, this is not something I would suggest. You can go for shades like Twig or, um, uh, you know, Twig is a very nice color. Spirit is a very nice color. So you can use anything like that. Um, you know, when you have Whirl is a very nice color if you have anything above NC35. Now, if you are below NC35, Modesty is a beautiful new 
to color and uh, you need to pair it with a nice brown lip liner all right so i'm going to uh, draw my lips and ensure your um, you know lip liner is sharp do not use unsharpened pencils on your client you need to always sharpen each after each and every client and sanitize it using isopropyl alcohol uh, see i always say when it comes to makeup artistry it's not just about applying products. It's the protocols and principles by which you apply, the method by which you sanitize, clean, and use products on a client that matters. So that's very important as makeup artists. Uh, I hope you will remember that always, yeah? So I'm going to take a brown lip liner, and I'm going to um, just line my lips, yeah? I draw over my cupid's bow them. That's just how I've done over the past many years. So. Now this lip liner is a brown lip liner. This is from a brand called Barry M that you get it in the UK. It's a drugstore brand, which is based in UK. It's not available in India, but uh, you have K-Beauty, which is uh, Nika's collaboration with uh, Katrina Care. And uh, they have this lip liner called Fame. These lip liners are amazing. And there's a lip liner called Fame from K-Beauty. It's beautiful. And Cork, there's a lip liner from MAC called Cork. It's a very nice lip liner as well. So. If you work with nude lipsticks, brown lip liner is kind of like a must for Indians. So. Now I'm going to um, kind of shade from the corner of my lips just to bring my lip back like very like pouty. <laughs> so I'm going to take my lip liner. I'm going to shade on the corners of my lips, as you can see now. Like This brings shadow here and makes this area stand out. So. I hope you can see this. Take your finger and blend just to, just to give it a bit of undertone. And now I'm going to apply Max Modesty. Now this is my own lipstick, so I can use it directly from here. But if you are using it on a client, uh, you know you need to take a spatula, scrape the um, lipstick out into a steel palette and use it from there. Do not use <laughs> lipstick right from the bullet. And after you use, uh, ensure you uh, sanitize uh, your bullet with uh, isopropyl alcohol. All right, so I'm gonna use this straight because this is mine. It's a very pretty nude color. And uh, what I'm going to do is, now I've applied my uh, lipstick, which is modesty. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a flat concealer brush. Wait a second. Any questions, file in, in, in between? Uh, give me a second. You can very well hit me. <laughs> If you have any questions uh, to all the viewers, like feel free to ask me. Please do not have any, you know, hitch hitch out like you know what, what she's going to think or anything. I'm an educator, so you can very well ask me questions. Feel free. <laughs> okay. So um, I'm going to just uh, you know continue. Uh, this is an, a palette from RCMA. It's a beautiful wonderful palette uh, from a brand called RCMA. I don't know whether you're familiar with it. You don't get it in India. I've not seen artists use much in India, but RCMA is a wonderful product which is used by a lot of artists worldwide. It's a cult favorite. And this is one of my favorite palette to use on clients. More than Derma, Crayola and all that stuff, I like this. I like more than all that yada yada, I like this one. Like RCMA is 
beautiful. The finish is amazing. It's highly pigmented, stands really good in camera, in photographs, in real life. It just blends beautifully. And it's a nice cream um, foundation concealer palette. You can use it as a foundation. You can also use it as a concealer as well to spot correct and conceal. And you can use it to contour, uh, color correct. You can do it. It's just multi-purpose. And I'm going to use this, um, you know, a palette. And I'm going to take a little bit. And I'm going to just sharpen around my lips because I have a bit of pigmentation. So I want my lips to stand out better. So I take a flat brush. Just to sharpen, you know. And ensure that your uh, the color that you use is not too light or dark. It just uh, merges really well with your natural skin tone. You don't want it to look like a shadow or you don't want it to look uh, like a white cast, you know, so. Um, this lipstick is quite creamy. It's not a, a matte. It's quite creamy. It's got like a creamy uh, satin finish. Uh, so this will transfer if you're wearing a mask. This is something that you need to consider because mask is something which is part of our daily lifestyle now. And when you wear uh, work on brides as well, you have to consider that. Uh, you need to blot and make the uh, lipstick matte uh, when you are, if the bride has to wear a mask, all right? Or use a mattifying lipstick. Um, I like to wear, uh, you know, nude lipsticks with a bit of gloss, uh, but it transfers. If there's a mask, don't do this technique at all. It'll transfer to the mask. But uh, just in case, I'll show you how to wear a gloss. And this is from a brand called, um, this is called uh, Soap, Soap and Glory. It's a beautiful brand, Soap and Glory. And this is the sexy motherfucker lip gloss. This is like a, uh, you know, it kind of fills your lips and makes your lips a little more pouty. So it's kind of like a, it gives you a tingly feeling. <laughs> it makes your lips a bit more pouty. I don't know about the pouty feeling, but it's nice. It's a nice feeling. <laughs> I like it. So, and this color is called sponge sugar now something similar you can get from mac and it's called oyster girl it's a very similar color so you can you don't get soap and glory in india unfortunately but you can get um mac's oyster girl which is amazing so when you apply gloss do not apply all over the lips just apply in the center portion so yeah just in the central portion And this lip gloss gives you a very tingly feeling. <laughs> it's like you have just chewed some mint and uh, it's just touched your lips. It actually says, you know, it just promotes blood flow into your lips and makes it a little more pouty. I do not know, know about that, but it looks nice. <laughs> it's a nice color. So, um, so this is what I've done. And uh, I'm going to just finish the look, you know, just curl my lash. I'm not going to put any false lashes. If you want, you can apply false lashes. Um, you know, if, I'll recommend a good brand of lashes that you can get in India. There are so many amazing, astounding lash brands in India. This is from Henna Haina Beauty. There's an indie small brand in India called Henna Haina Beauty. Amazing lashes, quite affordable, not very expensive, and quite wispy lashes. I hope you can see the lashes are quite wispy and amazing. So if you want, you can apply lashes as well. It's your choice. I'm not going to apply lashes uh, because I have sensitive eyes. So I'm not going to apply lashes. I hope you know how to wear, uh, put eyelashes on clients. Uh, and of course, curl your lashes as well. Just take your lash curler and just curl lashes. And then you need to put your mascara. Now, as a makeup artist, this is one of the most important thing that you need to keep in mind. Mascaras expire every three months and you should not use mascara want from a normal mascara on a client. You need to use your single use disposable mascara once and you need to apply, use that on a client. Do not use 
uh, you know, cross contaminate product on a client. You do not do that. This is a COVID situation. So you need to keep, be very wary about all these things. Yeah. So I'm going to take, uh, this is my own mascara. This is from Too Faced and this is called Damn Girl. So I'm going to apply it on my upper lashes. And because I have sensitive eyes, I've not tight lined my eyes, but if you work on a client, try and tight line on your eyes as well. You know, just um, the same tight line on the waterline. It would be amazing. That would give you a nice look. But for me, I have a little bit of sensitivity now. So I've just not tight lined. Wiggle and take the mascara one up. Wiggle, coat every bit of lash. Lashes can actually take uh, make or break a look, you know. So if you really do very good uh, lash job, your eyes will really stand out in photographs, in real life. And coat every bit of your lashes underneath as well. When you use disposable uh, wands on a client, you do not dip it again and use it on a client. You just dip and then you use, throw it off. You want more mascara, take another wand, you pick it up again and then you use, yeah? And mascara expires every three months. It would uh, get contaminated with the bacteria called Demodex folliculorum. There's a bacteria uh, which is uh, pro, which will give rise to all these eye infections and uh, or so many things on your mascara and it just lives in your lashes you know this particular uh, mite actually lives in your lashes and this can contaminate your uh, mascara so you need to be very careful when you work with uh, uh, you know mascaras on a client you don't want any kind of cross contamination there um, forget about corona virus but this is also a very important factor to consider right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to finish it off you know i'm just going to uh, apply my bindi and all that and just uh, finish off the look and my hair is not that <laughs> it's not that uh, neat and I need to get it colored and stuff but corona situations <laughs> yeah so I'm not able to do anything much with regard to my this thing um yeah with regard to uh, getting my hair recolored <laughs> stuff so yeah so forget about my roots please <laughs> so yeah and I'll set my makeup as well. I'll just let my mascara dry and I'll, I'll show you how to set your makeup as well using a setting spray. Okay. Any questions at all in the meantime? So you can very well ask me. Uh, I think it's done. So the session is uh, almost to an end. All right. Okay. I'll just set my makeup and I'll just finish it off. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay, so uh, this is my uh, setting spray from PAC. It's a micro finish setting spray. It's amazing to use on clients. And I see a lot of artists just, just dunk the face in setting spray. It can't budge your makeup. Just don't do that. Just apply it where you have your base and just set slightly. Do not apply setting spray over your eyeshadows and mascaras. So just hold your hand like that and just go like that on your forehead. Go like that on the base. Go like on this base, this side this side that's it you don't apply setting spray on your eyeshadows you don't need that yeah um and i'll just let it rest uh for five minutes and meantime i'll just wear my uh you know i'll just apply my um gearing <laughs> or anything like that so that you will see they look um i hope you can see my eye makeup clearly um through this thing so Uh, so, Lakshmi, that was a great session. Thank you so much. Uh, we'd like to thank you for uh, being on our platform. And no I'm sure the audience loved the session. It looks stunning. So, thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you for everyone who tuned in. And uh, we shall see you in the next session. Thank you very much, uh, Payal, for coordinating everything. And thank you to all the viewers. I hope the session was helpful and you have taken down tips and tricks and I've been of help to you. Uh, please do try out the look and um, you know, learn, evolve and do a wonderful job where you get a lot of clients and make a lot of clients happy. Wish you all the very best.